Welcome to the Warrior Workshop. As you can tell, we're not at the workshop. We're on a field trip. We're here to show you how we installed this Ring Doorbell Pro doorbell camera. What happened is we had to do some resquaring of the door frame. So in the process, unfortunately, a little uh, inexpensive doorbell button, the plastic contact got broke, which held the screw in place. So that kind of said, forget that one. We've been debating on going with the doorbell camera system, so this is a good opportunity. Pardon the uh, chip paint and stuff like that. When the weather's warm enough for a couple days in a row, we'll give this some touch up. So pardon that. But there's a reason we chose, chose the doorbell pro. It's because we had an existing doorbell system, meaning there's wires that come in here, so we don't have any batteries in this one. There are There is a less expensive one that does have hardware option. However, what also works is our mechanical door chime. We do not have to do any rewiring of that except installing the battery, and I'll show you how to do that in the video. And the transformer. You gotta make sure you have a 16 volt transformer, which happened to be we did. If you got all that wiring in place, check to make sure your transformer is actually 16 volt capable. If not, you can swap that up. If you don't have any of those systems in place, you're gonna probably have to look at a wireless option. But again, we have no batteries, no hardware, or excuse me, no power units to worry about. It's just as good as a regular doorbell with the camera system. So let's start with by showing you what was in the box, and we'll go from there. Here's what's included in the Ring Doorbell Pro package. You have, obviously, the container comes in. You've got a couple of wedges to allow you to change the direction depending on your siding or original doorbell position. You've got a battery pack that needs to go in your mechanical door chime. Again, this one works with a mechanical door chime. It's got the mounting screws. It obviously has the ring doorbell camera and it has the quick start user guide. But if you're like me, you're probably watching a video to learn how to do this. So hopefully this helps you out. Okay, before you actually purchase your Ring doorbell camera, you might want to find this little gizmo somewhere in your basement, house, garage, near the electrical panel. Somewhere along with this gizmo is what's called a transformer. It takes the 110 volt power that goes into this box for the smoke detector and converts it down to, in our case, 16 volts. If you do have one of these, you want to make sure it is the correct voltage, which it's right up here between the two screws. I know you can't see it on camera. You notice I said in our case, some of them will be 8 or 10 volts, some of them will be 3 screws to where they're optional 8, 16, or 24. The Ring Doorbell Pro requires 16 volts. This one already is a 16 volt transformer. If you see the ones with 3 screws, just pay attention because how you hook it up will determine what voltage it produces. If you don't have one of these transformers already installed, it's kind of a little bit of a frustrating process, but it's not impossible to install because the wire off to the left here goes upstairs to our door chime. The wire off to the right goes outside to the doorbell. So if, honestly, if you don't have one of these installed, I would look at getting a wireless system. But if you do have one of these installed and it's the correct voltage, you're good to go. If it's not the correct voltage, these are about 25 to 30 bucks at the local home center. All right, now that you've got the power disconnected, you make sure you have the right transformer. We want to find our doorbell chime. This is usually a hallway, living room, basically wherever the ding-dong sound comes from. So we'll just simply pop the cover off. There we go. For those that don't understand the difference between a mechanical and a digital doorbell chime, this one actually uses real metal and a plunger to make the doorbell sound, the true ding-dong. If it has a speaker on the inside, then it is a digital doorbell chime, and I'm not sure if those will work or not. I'm not quite a, you know, I haven't been versed in all of the different things. All right, so now that we determine that we do have a mechanical doorbell, which probably should have done that before you purchased the system anyways, we're gonna install the battery on the doorbell chime. All right, and the battery is designed small enough that it usually can tuck up in a spot that will just loosen a screw slide the terminal over, make sure the original wire stays connected,
and then tighten everything down. For some reason, if the slide-on connector will not fit on the mechanical screws that are inside of here that are designed for the wires to be hooked up, they do include a second little adapter that you unplug the one with the slide-on terminals, plug this one in, and now you have open wires to wrap around a screw or whatever connection your mechanical doorbell chimes. And then just tuck that away. And finally replace your doorbell cover. All right, here we are outside. I did have to make a minor, small modification to the door jam. A little bit of chisel work to make everything fit where the existing wire was. Now, what's real nice is they send two extensions. That way, if your wires aren't sticking out as far as our, ours are, you can add those and they include the wire nuts. The other thing that's included in the package is a couple of wedges. If you need the door, if it's over here for some reason, they've got a sideways wedge. And if it's down low or up high, they've got a vertical up and down slanted wedge. And you actually can combine them, they are stackable. But we're gonna try it with no wedge. From the videos I've seen, most people have pretty good luck with that. This will get painted once uh, the weather's gonna cooperate long enough that we can paint it outside. All right, what you wanna do is use the same two colors that they'd used before. Color does not matter as long as it's the same two wires. There's two terminal screws. There was a little sticker on the back that you can remove. Just said, make sure that you have 16 volts. All right, and the key to a good connection is to make sure that the long part of the wire is on the right side or the clockwise side so as you tighten the screw it will naturally kind of keep itself attached so that pull that in all right now that we have these installed get everything in position there's a little protective film on there we haven't removed yet all right now that we got our opening the correct size let's get everything tucked away and it comes with a multitude of screw sizes. So pick which one fits best for how many risers you've got. And if you notice, I didn't tighten that all the way. It is plastic. So we're gonna use power drill to put most of it in and then finish it up with a hand screwdriver. They do include a Include a couple of uh, masonry anchors if you were to happen to have a brick or now that that's installed, we'll remove the film. Or <laughs> typically, the security screw is a Torx. This one happens to be a standard Phillips. So we'll still go with it though. There we are. Let's go downstairs and rehook the power up and see how it works. It notifies the phone. Turns my phone on. Can you hear me? Can you can you hear me? Yes. All right, that's how it works. And there's my phone notifying that I'm in front of the doorbell again. So I'm gonna have to find that notification because or set the sensitivities because every time a car goes down the road, which our road's a dead end, so. Except for the neighbors, that should be pretty calm, pretty quiet. But it's not state-of-the-art high-tech security, but it's hardwired. I don't have to worry about any batteries to redo. I've got the original chime working in the house. There is about a one-second delay on both voice and recording from watching it on my phone. I've installed the Ring app onto my computer so I can look at it from there. 
So overall, I'd give this a five-star rating, maybe four and a half, just because of the one-second delay, but I think that's due to Wi-Fi. What, what else can you expect for the price point of around $150? So thanks for watching. Hopefully this field trip got you something for you to use. So all I have to say is go out and make some sawdust.